how to properly install a grow tent. Uh, I installed mine three months ago and I already had to redo it. So in this video, I will show you what I've changed and uh, hopefully uh, you will be able to avoid redoing yours. Hi, my name is Remy and I love Nepontes. Because there is so many plants and I need to keep them humid, uh, really humid, uh, there is some condensation on the age of the tent. And even under, the difference of temperature is quite high. So I need to have an extra layer under the tent to make sure all this water do not reach the ground. And I tried to make it as nice as possible, but that's the maximum we can do here. So now let's uh, go inside the tent. Do you remember the small trays, the 10, 20, that were too small? I've found a solution to that. Well, I should say my best friend find a solution to that. Those are planter saucer. Uh, that's not trays, but they will do the same as any kind of trays and you can tetris a lot of pots of different size. These trays are a little bit bigger than what I was searching for, but they will do the job. That's less space for me, but more space for the plants, so it's uh, still okay. And square pots are really a must-have. Okay, now let's see what is inside the tent. So obviously plants, but uh, beside that, we will have, for example, uh, the temperature and humidity measurements. Here, the black wire, that's the sensor from VivoSun it will uh, take the measurements on the upper shelf because that's warmer. And then I have another sensor. It's not monetary, but I prefer to have that. Second one, lower to have an idea what is temperature and humidity on the lower shelf. Speaking of which, here we have uh, a fan. I believe it, uh, it's blowing uh, faster than that. Uh, it's blowing the medium temperature air up so at least it moves all the hot air uh, on the top. And under, I have another one that blows the air on the ground because that's where it's the coldest and the more humid. So uh, after that, uh, there is the lights. As you see, there is lights under the shelves and on the top. So at least every single plant gets uh, as much light as uh, it needs. What else I can tell you? Uh, obviously, the big trays. Uh, they will help to really have the maximum plants per uh, square feet. When you have like a mine, a 4x4 four four grow tent, that's really not a lot of space. And you will always do your best to have the more pot. I will show you a few plants. This one, that's uh, Nepotes Minima Lake Poso. So super cute and it was not picturing on the windowsill. Uh, it was too dry. So beside that, uh, yes, we have a few of the LVB by Norciana Maxima. So same cross from the same seed pods. This one stripes, pink, and this one super dark, uh, almost like a naga. Beside that, we have a Sibuensis by Vichai by Loiai, I believe, uh, doing great now on the windowsill. Clearly, you can see the difference. A lot of plants that were not happy up there on the windowsill now are picturing again. So it's really interesting, maybe later we'll do a video of the plants that accept lower humidity versus uh, the one that uh, doesn't. For example, this one, the Ventricosa by Sibelensis. I don't know if it's the Sibelensis parent, but it was not happy. And even the plants that accept the windowsill, uh, for example, I got a big order from uh, Malaysia Tropical the plants are recovering, so they recover way faster when it's humid than uh, when it's a little bit dry on the windowsill. So just for that, the whole grow tent worth it. Here, that's uh, most of the pickiest species I have are cuttings. Uh, this one, for example, is flowering. It's a cutting from uh, Gymnanthora. Uh, other cuttings, some uh, other plants. For example, the low EI is finally doing a regular picture. This is Jacqueline A. Let me, whoops. I don't want to spit it out. Okay. So that's the pure Jack. And uh, now it's doing uh, way better. It's slow to adapt, but that's doing way better now. What else? Yeah, all the 
the Tangerine now will produce a picture that's a real improvement compared to the widow seal. And some would squeeze in all the time. Um, what else I can show you? Yes, we have the BBGA here, uh, doing great, fully recovered. Uh, some air plants, some uh, seedlings. What else I have uh, in the tents? Some new plants, again, from the, the import. So uh, some are doing great. The, this is almost like a hospital for me. A lot of trays are just here to recover the plants. Yeah, again, super humid. So I'm really happy to have a layer under the tent. Oh, and on the upper shelf, I have this big tray, but on the lower, I had to, I don't know, MacGyver the thing, uh, try to build my own. It's doing okay. For sure, I maximized the space, but there is some leaking when there is water, when I'm watering. So I may need to fix it, but it's always better than that where I lose some space. And even adding a little extra space here, it's good. The top shelf is maximized for me. Uh, just this is a waste, but yeah. But under, I'm still looking for a decent tray. Okay, so let's talk about the humidity now. Um, here. So that's the spraying system, the Mist King. So the pump is outside and then I spray here and I have another one here. So it's almost uh, everywhere on the top shelf. Only here I'm missing it. So uh, this is uh, the, the best place because the humidity will go down and then everything will be uh, humid. And uh, that's a very fine uh, spray. So uh, it won't soak the plant. It's really to boost the humidity around and a little bit of water will stay on the leaf. But clearly, uh, that's not watering properly the plants. It's only for humidity, as you see, not even a, a big drop. So that's great. That's what you want. You don't want a load of water. You want everything to be humid, the sphagnum to collect this humidity, and that's it. So some uh, leaves will be uh, more humid than others, but uh, it will dry in no time. Oh, and I just received the last sprayer. Here. So now everything on the top shelves is sprayed. And it's sprayed 15 seconds, a few times a day. Uh, that's the military clock, I think you call that. So at 9 a.m., 11, 1 p.m., 3, 5, 7, and 9. Smart Grotant Automation. First, I want to let you know this is not a sponsored video. Uh, Vivosun was kind enough to send me the product to give it exchange an honest review. So that's exactly what I will do here. So let's start by the Vivosun Grow Hub controller because that's where everything will be automatic. So that's everything that is inside the box. I'm not using everything, but uh, long story short, you can connect the lights and the ventilation. The only problem for me is the lights because my lights are regular light. Uh, not smart lights, uh, they cannot be turned on by the VivoSun. But we'll talk about that later. So this hub has a sensor. And that's this sensor that will control the aero zesh. So the temperature could be the trigger or the humidity, or both. That means if the temperature go that high and that low in humidity, it could trigger something. So that's uh, pretty convenient. In the user manual, they have uh, an example. You take the intake fan, so this uh, aerosesh on the ground, and you push the air inside the tent. And then another one could extract this hot air. You could also have only one of them inside the tent and uh, taking all the heat and pushing that outside. But that will take some space inside the grow tent. And uh, for me, because that's not a tall tent, uh, every space inside is really valuable. 
So because the heat goes up and the humidity goes down, I decided to only use this fan as an exhauster fan. So literally it's sucking the hot air inside the tent out and naturally the air from the basement enter the grow tent and cool it down. So right now it's working at uh, speed 2 on 10, so it's not super fast, not noisy and uh, it's slightly sucking the air. Uh, you can also do the other way around, pushing the air inside the tent, as did Joseph. This is my night drop controlled fan. And it's pushing the air of the basement inside the tent. Yep, it grabs air from around this window. I put it up here because this is a, it's a pretty old house and that is just like a plexiglass window. Uh -huh. It's not a real window, so it's really drafty. I can feel it up here. So I just grab that air and shove it in. In the summer, that's very important um, because it's not as cold down here. So I need that little extra cooling. And to connect this aerosesh uh, to the tent, you only have to use this kind of a tube used for uh, ventilation. And uh, you just keep that open inside the tent and that's it. And that's uh, the grow hub. So that's what controls uh, the fan and the intake uh, or uh, inline fan that push the air from outside inside the tent or vice versa. So the light is not used. I will talk about that uh, soon. But uh, beside that, everything here uh, I'm using. Uh, the, this one, for example, that's the timer. Every few minutes, it will turn all the fan on. This one, that's the one that sucked the hot air uh, out. So again, uh, it's programmed. So after the light shut down, it will trigger and take out all the heat. So as you see on this uh, two sensor, uh, you can tell that in a really short amount of time, half an hour, I'm able to lose five to six uh, degree Celsius. And all this takes only two electricity plug. So the power goes to the fan and then the fan gives the power to the hub. And the aerosesh requires his own power. So for me to make this uh, grow hub perfect, it would be to be able to connect regular lights. If the smart lights are controlled by this kind of plug, if we were able to have that connected to a smart outlet, then this grow hub could be able to replace two timers. So that would avoid us to spend more money and having more connecting and a little bit of a mess. Because all the under shelf lights are regular lights. And if you only add one single light in the center, you will have a lot of shadows. So I don't know if this exists yet, but I'm clearly interested to get one if it's possible. And again, I'm quite happy with this grow tent because of the temperature really well controlled. If you want to see how I've installed all the lights on this grow tent, here is a video for you. If you want to support the channel, uh, you can buy some t-shirts on Etsy. And uh, until next time, happy growing!